All right, welcome back, ladies and gents. We're going to be taking a walk and talk today, talking predominantly about China, but a few other things as well. And here we go. Look, got my summer walking boots on today. So we're going to walk through this uh, forest here and have a chat as we go. So let's kind of start with the main point then, and that is about what's actually happening. The world is changing at such a crazy rapid rate right now that even it's hard for me to keep pace. So what have we got? We've got tension. We've got the Russia, Ukraine. We've got China, US now. We'll talk about that and what Biden said and how China retaliated. We have famine. We have Somalia. We have Pakistan civil war just erupting. In fact, it's about 15 countries now. There's probably more than that if we include all these really tiny countries, but there's about 15 countries now that currently have civil unrest or protests or riots. Um, it's not looking good, let's just say that. All right, let's get on some easier ground to walk on here a minute then. So what actually happened? Well, Biden threatened China uh, inadvertently, directly, whatever you want to say, uh, up to you. But he made a threat to China and then all of his advisors are sort of panicking now and trying to do damage control. But really, it's too late because China issued a statement. So they started off with words and then they moved into actions. So what did Biden say? Well, he said if China invades Taiwan, that the US would act militarily. <laughs> OK, all right. So that's the first point. So what did China respond with? Here's their statement. It is hypocritical and futile for the United States to say one thing and do another on the Taiwan issue and frequently encourage and support Taiwan independence forces. They then went on to say then the US has violated its commitment on the Taiwan question. It will not only cause irredeemable consequences for the China US relationship, it will also eventually incur an unbearable cost to the US. Now, what I'd love for you to do in the comments below is to just write what you think that means. What do you think that would translate to? An unbearable cost. Now, I've got a couple of thoughts on it. Let me just give you one of those thoughts. Right now, we've got globalization or we've got the breakdown of, of globalization to be more precise and specific. So a lot of the goods that America enjoys, and not just America, it's Europe as well, it's the UK, even where I live on the Isle of Man, which is where we are today, walking through this beautiful forest, which are all over the island. I know that we get most of our goods and why a lot of the goods are so cheap is because they are made in China and they are shipped over here. So this could be what they are referring to about the unbearable cost. It could be military. It could be a loss of life. We know that there is a difference in how we perceive human life in different countries and how different governments perceive that. So it could be something to do with that. But please drop your comment below. What do you think is meant by that? So what happened after that then? Well, China first started with words and then they moved on to actions. So what did they do? They did exercises, so military exercises involving fighter jets and warships all around Taiwan. Um, it was pretty serious sort of escalation, I guess we can say, or exercise. But just remember, there's been, what, 300 incursions, as they would call them, to the Taiwan um, airspace or waters just in the last, you know, recent time. So I think it was more of a show of force and, um, you know, them showing what they thought of Biden's statement there. But, you know, this is the thing when you have a president like Biden, let's just say, where he just says whatever he thinks. Uh, he doesn't sort of filter his words a lot of the time. And then you see all the damage control later on. But I think it also shows a lack of judgment because when Biden was asked, why did he say that? He said it was a deterrent to China. So I'm guessing he didn't expect them to do the opposite and think, oh, whoa, we're really scared now. Um, and instead, what did they do was they issued a statement, so words, and then showed their actions with the, the military drills. So some people are saying, oh, no, Biden did a great job. He's showing strong leadership there. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I'd agree with that, because if you look at Biden and look at a lot of the actions, they don't really show a man at the, you know, the height of his power and, and strength. We've seen this with some other leaders, but you know, what we're seeing, I would say at the moment in the West is that we have 
again, I'm not specifically targeting anyone here when I say this, but we have a lot of weak leadership. That's what I would say. And not just weak leadership, but leadership that isn't really drumming their own beat. They're, they're sort of drumming to the beat of, you know, organizations, all these three letter organizations that we have now, uh, WEF in particular, you know, they're open about it where they say that they've um, put young leaders in positions of power. Uh, all around the world, most of the Western nations, they have leaders uh, that have been put in power and they're, they're known as WEF young leaders. Look into this if you don't believe it. But either way you want to look at it, you know, his comments have not gone down well. What do we have in these situations? I remember as, uh, at school when I was bullied, when I was very, very young at school, I was bullied. And I was always told by, because then my parents put me into martial arts classes. Let's not even get started with that. I was doing nine different martial arts at one point. It was ridiculous. But my instructor always told me, when you come up against a bully, they're always going to react in two ways. Number one, if you hit them hard enough, uh, they're going to run away and that's it. It's done. They won't bother you again. But another time you don't even need to do that. Words are often strong enough to deter bullies. So I don't know, maybe Biden was running with that. If he did this, you know, if he said this, it would deter um, what, he, and again, I'm not saying China is a bully. You know, you can make of, of politics what you want. There's always two sides to every story, but obviously it hasn't worked. If that was the plan, it hasn't seemed to have worked with China. Okay, this part is a little clearer so we can walk a little more now. But yeah, I'm just listening to a lot of commentators and I think people are being naive at the moment on this whole China and US aggression or whatever you wanna uh, call the situation. So many people are saying, oh, this will all just go away and you know, it'll all die down. I don't think it will personally, I really don't. I think it's gonna get worse and I think it probably will end in some sort of military conflict. And you know, it can be started by accident. Maybe someone's jets are in a place where they, you know, shouldn't be according to another nation. Because again, it's all semantics at the end of the day. Some people might say one thing, but others feel differently about, you know, what someone has said or their borders and things like that. What happens if one day someone accidentally fires off a rocket, takes down another nation's jet, and then they respond and then they respond. And next thing you know, you're, you're in a military conflict. And again, let's look at patterns here and let's look at history. What are we seeing? Well, we're seeing a lot of exercises taking place right now with China around Taiwan, just as we saw other exercises taking place before other invasions. So I think it's pretty obvious what's gonna happen. I think it's gonna be military. I think there's gonna be a military conflict, but also what is China doing at the moment? If you, well, you probably won't have seen this because it's not in any of the mainstream news, but China is actually doing a tour of the Pacific nations. Uh, let me see if I made a note of which ones. Yeah, I've got it here. So we've got Micronesia, Solomon Islands, Samoa, Fiji, Kiribati, Tonga, Vanuatu, Papua New Guinea, and the Cook Islands, and Niu. So they're trying to create this alliance at the moment, China is, between all these other nations. So what often happens, and again, we've seen this militarily when there's been conflicts before, is you have these alliances forming, these allegiances forming. Now, not to say those Pacific nations are gonna join, but that is what I'd say one reason why China might be doing that at the moment, trying to make this new alliance. And again, we've talked on previous videos about how these alliances actually um, form, converge at the uh, pinnacle point. We saw it during World War II as well, where a lot of these nations suddenly all just joined together and we had, well, you know what happened at that point. Oh, but before I forget, I think Australia is crapping their pants right now with all of this going on in their backyard. Imagine, they've already got China. Imagine if all the Pacific nations joined the alliance with China as well. Australia's gonna be in big trouble. So uh, let's, uh, let's monitor how that goes. And also, I don't know if you uh, may have seen this or may not have seen this, but there was a UN Security Council meeting, I think it was, um, just in the last couple of days around new sanctions, putting fresh sanctions on North Korea because they've tested this new uh, missile. Now, let's think back to 2006 when these sanctions were first enacted. Why were they put in place? Why are any sanctions put in place? It is as a 
they say it's a deterrent, but I would say it's more of a punishment. But they say it's a deterrent to stop the activity from continuing. Well, again, it's not a good sort of uh, advertisement for sanctions. When you put sanctions on in 2006, what is that, 16 years ago, and North Korea are still doing their rocket testing. So, yeah, okay, it probably slowed it down by a few years, but it doesn't really ever stop anything. In fact, just look at the whole reason behind the sanctions on Russia and what they said, it was to stop the war in Ukraine or the invasion of Ukraine, whatever you wanna call it, or the Ukraine conflict. It hasn't stopped anything. It has just carried on as normal. In fact, the sanctions were really on the Russian people who are not really anything to do with it. And I think the biggest question about North Korea and their rocket program, why have they intensified it again in the last few months? I think it's pretty obvious yet again, they are expecting there to be some sort of a major war. That's what I think they're expecting. So what would I do if I were expecting a major war like that? I would do the same thing. I'd be creating rockets and, and all of this sort of stuff, either predominantly as a defense, but, but who knows? Maybe it is for attack. I don't, I don't know, I have no idea. But you know, whenever we have these serious crises, it becomes everyone for themselves. And although people say, no, 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 that wouldn't happen. Actually, I've proven in these videos that that is what happens. And Sri Lanka is a really good sort of example of this at the moment. Sri Lanka, complete, total collapse there so what have they done they have said oh we'll take russian oil even though there's all the stuff going on with russian oil and then all the the news media got wind of it and so they all came out and said no this is fake news fake news so all these reports of you know the sri lankan prime minister and you know their trade minister that's saying oh yeah we're going to take russian oil they've all just disappeared oh no no we we didn't say that we meant um we meant a, a different kind of oil yeah of course you did, because everything's got to play into, again, this is the way with media and, and all the other stuff, everything has to play into this, this set agenda. Whether it's a positive or negative agenda, you've got to play by the agenda and you can't have anything that deviates away from that. But why would they do that in the first place? Well, this comes into, again, tipping point theory, which I often talk about. When you get into a crisis mode, you'll do anything to get out of that crisis mode, as you've seen in society. People will do whatever they need to to get out of that crisis. Uh, let's move on now to uh, Pakistan. We're back into the lower forest now, so we found a, a path. Um, but let's get into Pakistan then. Complete civil war seems to be going on right now with Imran Khan, who I mentioned, was that last week, walk and talk, or the week before? But I mentioned him, uh, the former ousted prime minister, uh, well, he's not taking it lying down. Again, he called it election. <laughs> you know what? Um, he's trying to say the US got him um, out of power and, and all of this sort of stuff. Well, his supporters now have marched on different cities, but Islamabad uh, in particular. So there's been uh, a lot of violence, a lot of well, civil unrest, basically, is what we've what we've seen. And it doesn't look as though it's going to be going away. So uh, not good for Pakistan. Final two points then, Somalia is facing the worst drought in over 40 years. So pretty serious there, but we're seeing this in a lot of countries, famine, we're seeing famine, drought, flooding. We're seeing a lot of people displaced. Uh, you know, I can't tell you what to do, but if you do have any spare funds, I know I'm gonna be sending um, what, what I can to some of these different countries. For me personally, I always um, put a preference on sending food, uh, especially through organizations that don't, you know, maybe they're not a three letter organization and they don't take a big cut for staff and things like that. So I'm gonna be sending uh, what I can to some of these famine and drought stricken uh, places at the moment. But one last point then before we close around the WEF meeting in Davos this week. People have asked why I haven't covered it it's not worth covering. It will get me in way too much trouble to cover it like I have before. But I do think it's quite ironic and amusing that all of these hundreds, if not a thousand jets have flown in people so that they can give a speech on reducing their CO2 <laughs> emissions. Oh boy, talk about the irony of it or the uh, hypocrisy of that. 
flying in on a private jet and then flying in cars and whatever else people are flying in because they don't weigh a lot do they armored vehicles so you can give a, a speech on reducing co2 emissions yeah well this is the crazy world that we now live in but ladies and gents i hope you have a fantastic weekend i'm going to enjoy this walk now i'm going to carry on on this walk uh, near the end of it already been walking for a long time through this beautiful forest especially after a week of just going through all these news articles and tracking all this it is very stressful as a lot of you have noticed they say neil you look tired and don't you get stressed out by all this and the answer is yes i do it is very stressful i do get very tired by the end of the week so that's why i go for a very long walk and uh and a nice relaxing weekend so all right i will see you on uh, I don't know what day it'll be next, but next week anyway. Uh, take care. God bless you and your families. Hope you have a great, relaxing weekend. See you soon.